Hello, and thank you for joining us here on The Neutral Zone. I am Phil Milani, joined, as always, by my trusty sidekick, my partner in crime. Really, the, the best way to describe this person is my everything. It's at Eric Dahl. Phil, for those, of, those members of Neutral Zone Nation watching on YouTube, they can see that I'm wearing a blue sweater. Mm -hmm. You're wearing a red sweater. Uh -huh. A little bit of like a Matrix situation going on here. Yeah, which pill? Yeah, uh, which yeah. pill? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, I was walking around the hallways here at the facility today, and I was like, this is kind of like my Nick Saban sweater. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if you need a big win, you put on the Saban sweater. That's a nice, it's got a nice little V. Uh, nice, yeah, what do you think? I, I like it. And the, the way that you've complimented it with your shirt, some nice blue dots on the shirt. Out? I think it looks think, great. Uh, that's what I try to do. Yeah. I do it really frenzy nation. And you went green the other day. Yeah. I'm now red. Colorful. You're blue every day. <laughs> well, when you're in the midst of a three-game losing streak, <laughs> Phil, yeah, just have to match my emotions. You're it, angry. It's like a mood the, sweater. Hence the red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm angry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grumpy. You it's wear red every regular. day. Yeah, it's just regular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a great show in store for NZ Nation, so maybe my sweater will change color as we get going here. Yeah, what what color would it change to? Ha yellow. Happy. It would yeah, change to happy. Orange. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, Good that, color. That's my favorite color, happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot to get to uh, here on this episode, uh, starting with Von Miller's comments, Eric. He, uh, he seems pretty confident that he's going to be able to go to Cleveland and take care of business. Yeah, he. Uh, we've seen him in the past make some sort of guarantee. This yeah, what, wasn't quite to that he, level, but... What did he say last time, Eric? Can I say it? I think so. He's, he essentially said that they were going to kick the Cardinals' butt. He, but, didn't, he didn't use the word butt. Yeah, that's like uh, um, A asterisk. Yeah, exactly. You know, at symbol. And, and he had a great game that sign. day. Yeah. He didn't go quite that far on uh, Tuesday ahead of the game, but he did put a lot of pressure on himself. We'll talk yeah. about it. He said, uh, he said uh, I don't know. I don't even know the name of the tackle. That was the first thing he said that he's going to be going against. Whoever it is, he's going to kick their – He's going to kill, kill him. That's yeah. what he said. Sorry. Seems mean. Yeah, kill him. Yeah. Ooh. Sh Schmurder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's going to do. So we'll get into that and uh, why maybe we think that Vaughn said that. Ooh. Vaughn's been very interesting at the podium this year. Yeah. Choice is an illusion. Yes. He's been saying. He's I'm been, at peace. Yeah, he's been very interesting this year at the podium. So he's maybe always, we'll talk about he's always interesting at the yeah. podium. And, and, of course, he always wears his uh, chicken farm hat. Yeah. Which that's been a nice consistent that's true yeah, and his yeah. um cool crocs yes yeezys, yeezys. i think they're called uh, yeah how do you say that word yeezy yeah you know yeah, yeah. of course uh you did ask vaughn a question though about those shoes didn't you i did i asked if uh, you could pull them off and is it he said yes say? yeah he said anybody can pull them off you know eric uh, uh one thing that um nz nation might not know but i have these leather sandals you do. Okay, and they're kind of the talk of the office whenever I wear them. Yeah, they show a lot of foot. It's like a lot. It's like it's like a um, summertime before training camp starts. That's when these come out. Yeah. Okay, and it's sort of the talk of the office. Like if you were well, uh, if you were in like uh, <laughs> Athens maybe and you were just strolling the old cobblestone streets, uh -huh. you might you know say you were transported back uh -huh. a millennia. Athens, Greece, not Georgia. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I know. <laughs> Figured people could make that connection. Kind of okay. Yeah. In Athens, Georgia. <laughs> in Athens, Greece. I mean, these are the type of shoes you would imagine uh, people wearing. And one time I was wearing them, I was strolling through the locker room. Yeah. And Vaughn happened to be there that day, and he was like, Phil, I like those sandals. Yeah. And I, coming from Vaughn, that, I was like, oh, that was yeah. memorable. You You've know? gotten several compliments. I think, was it Shelby Harris a couple years ago that told you? He liked your jacket. I got a nice jacket. Yeah, Shelby. I was in the locker room, and he was like, I like that jacket, Phil. And I was like, oh, thanks. Thanks, Shelby. And he goes, no, I like that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if anyone's ever seen – I mean, some people have seen it, but the Hercules animated film. Yeah. That, you know how they make – You come. know they make those, those like, Hercules <laughs> sandals? sandals? Yeah. That's what you got. Yeah. They give me powers. Yeah. <laughs> to look good. Exactly. That's the power. 
yeah. Anyway, so Vaughn, yeah, complimented that. He knows I can pull those Yeezys off, uh, most definitely. Although I, I can't afford them. That's not <laughs> yeah, that's I wasn't going to say it. Okay. Uh, Rick Owens is getting upset. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> He's, he's mad. <laughs> uh, we do have to talk about Teddy Bridgewater a little bit. We do. Beat up. Uh, five sacks against the Raiders, 17 hits. Friend of the program, ESPN's Jeff Legwald, said that was 30% of his dropbacks. He was facing that kind of pressure. And as a result, he's been limping around the facility. Yeah, and kind of disappointing to find out that that didn't happen. You know, he hurt his foot, ankle. He said it didn't happen until very late in the game when he threw a touchdown that essentially was meaningless. That it got stepped on. Yeah. yeah. Kind of wish, you know, in retrospect, it's like if you get hurt making a play that like matters. Yeah, in cleanup time there. Yeah, you're like, yeah. gosh. Yeah. Seems so, like that's how it happens sometimes. And, like uh, to get up to the podium to do press, he had to like step up and uh, it, it was difficult for him. Yeah. I mean, there's Vic Fangio said he thinks Teddy Bridgewater is going to play. Teddy was asked if he's going to play. He kind of just – Teddy he was asked the a couple question of a times, bit. and he just said, I'm just trying to yeah. attack rehab every day here. Yeah. So I, I think he will. I do too. But there are, even if he does play, there's there's stuff to discuss, and if he doesn't play, there's certainly a lot to a discuss. A Drew Locke yeah. angle. Oh, oh, okay. I think people are going to hit the button, skip ahead, right to the Drew Locke yeah, talk. That's, that's what they're hitting right now. 30 second, 30 second, 30 second, 30 second. Wait till we get to the Brett Rippon talk. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's like, remember Kyle Slaughter? I do remember. Yeah, Yeah. that was a Got himself a tub. (laughs) No, that was Rip. Oh. Yeah, Rip got himself a tub. Yeah, good old Rip got a tub. Yeah. Uh, We got our bold predictions, as we like to do, Eric. Yeah, we like. uh, I have between now and the bold predictions to come up with my bold prediction. You don't have them ready to go. I like to just kind of. Feel, yeah, yeah you sort of the energy. Yeah. Spur of the moment, yeah. off the cuff. I spend all night thinking about him. Yeah. You know, I'm like, okay, what is it? You know, and then it just, it's always sort of percolating in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I like to do it. Uh, we've got emails to get to. We've got a voicemail. Are we reading um, Carlos's email? Uh, I don't think so, not Carlos's. Okay. Carlos was a little bit upset. That's uh, okay. He said we lost our credibility because uh, we kept picking the Broncos to win. I think he was mad that we um, said that it was okay for Vaughn to be in coverage against Chase Claypool. He did get upset about that because at home he saw that happen and then he said that he's going to get beat and then it happened immediately. Yeah. We just try to explain things. Not saying it was a good idea to have Vaughn yeah. covering, just explaining why that might be the uh, case. On that play, he did not kill Chase Claypool. No, but he probably knows Chase Claypool's name. Yeah, that is true. Probably, yeah. Anyway, if you'd like to be a part of the Neutral Zone, you can leave a voicemail, 707-NEUTRAL. Leave a voicemail. Let us know what you're thinking about, and we'll play it right on the, on the air here. So that's a good way to be a part of the show. It's an interactive experience here. Or you could leave an email. It's uh, yeah, you almost at the wrong you one. You can do a phone number, yeah. <laughs> neutral zone show at gmail.com. Yep. If you send your address and you want a Neutral Zone Show sticker, yeah, we'll send you cool, one. Right? Yeah, it's got our faces on them. We were just out at Breckenridge Brewery's farm house, trying to make it a farm home in Littleton, Sorry. off Brewery Lane. Brewery Lane, and there were some younger fans of the Neutral Zone that came up. They liked the sticker. They liked the sticker. They said I looked like a major weirdo, and, and you looked, looked like, like a dumb dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I tried to explain. I think she might have been three or four, and I was like, uh, "That's you don't even know me." <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. "How did you so, come to that conclusion?" Our uh, our psyches have taken a hit here. Yeah. At least she didn't say anything about our hair. Oh, my God. I could have taken <laughs> No, this. I could not I would have had to go home immediately. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the people are enjoying the stickers, so let us know if you want a sticker. You could put it on a laptop. You could put it on your car. You could put it on a, a water bottle uh, as Eric takes a drink of water here. Um, you can do anything Gotta you want with hydrated. the adhesive on that uh, is good for outside. It's outside grade adhesive. Yeah. I just I put mine on my back. Then the tattoo then artist tattoo. went over it. That's NZ Nation for life. We've sent them to Russia, Mexico, Peru, Australia, Germany, Australia, I mean, Japan, right? I think one in Japan. Yep. So anywhere you live and you listen to the Neutral Zone, you're a part of the family here, and we'll send you a sticker. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, just go ahead and smash the subscribe button. If you'd like to, leave a comment. Let us know what you're thinking about. And uh, sometimes we read the comments. Sometimes. I always read the comments. Yeah. But sometimes we make it we a part of the We read them on show. the air. Yeah. 
Uh, or you could just hit us up directly on Twitter at Eric Delala with an A, at Phil Milani with a PH, obviously uh, non traditional spellings. Right. So let's jump right into the show now here, Eric, our first topic. Von Miller says he is uh, feeling confident. He says that he's got to take it upon himself to uh, lead this team into Cleveland on Thursday night. And I think the soundbite that was uh, circulating, certainly on Twitter after you put it out. That's right. Adam Schefter, uh, not quote tweeted, but he like uh, mentioned you in his tweet. Yeah. And uh, it got a lot of play. A lot of play. What did you, what did you tweet? <laughs> well, Vaughn said, I need to play well. I'm going to play well. Then he just, you know, he was kind of joking. And he said, I don't even know the name of the tackle, but I'm going to kill him. I don't think he was joking. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I think that he specifically said those things to the media to get this team fired up. Yeah. No, I I agree. Because I think that if you're in the locker room and you hear Vaughn said that, you're like, Vaughn believes in us. You know, like, Vaughn, we got to go out there and back up what Vaughn had to say. Yeah, I mean, he's done it before. In 2018 against the Cardinals, he comes out and he says, we're going to kick their ass. I mean, you got to remember the Broncos were not. Earlier we said but, but now we're into the show. Yeah, now we've, the kids we are asleep. Yeah, by yeah. Now. <laughs> by now, yeah, they're not. It's okay. 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 Um, the Broncos were not. They they were on a skid then. They needed a win. Um, I believe that was the year that helped get them back. That win eventually helped them get back to six and six when they had a chance to kind of make a run at the postseason. Yep. Um, and Vaughn, that might be the best game I've seen Vaughn play since I got here in 2016. Yeah, certainly the best game since, like, uh, the Super Bowl run. Uh, Two forced a, fumbles. Yeah. I think three sacks, two and a half game. sacks. Yeah. He was all – Arizona had no chance in that He one. almost took Josh Rosen's head off. There was one play where he just bull rushed the tackle. Tackle completely fell over. So did Vaughn. Vaughn got back up, went across, and strip sack Rosen. And Rosen had stepped up, had no idea Vaughn was there, and Vaughn just obliterated him. Yeah, he was not ready for that. No, and the, and the Cardinals had no chance. The Broncos got a huge win. Uh, they had a lot of fun. I think it inspired the guys. Fortunately, too many injuries that year took its toll on that team. But yeah, hearing Vaughn talk like that today, I was kind of thinking that last week. Cause Maybe I, he would do something like this? Because I, I, I almost asked him last week, you know, you, you made this guarantee against Arizona. Like, do you think about doing that this week? Mm-hmm. Didn't ask him. This week, he just – he went right into it. Yeah, because earlier this year, he was like, this is kind of like a playoff game for us. Against the Ravens. Yeah, and then he said, oh, maybe that was too too early to say that. Kind of walked it back a little bit. The, before the Raiders game, he said, sort of said that this is, you know, good measuring stick. This is, this is a big game for us. And then now he's taken it one step further and just said, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the difference is, is that in those games, he, he said, we. You know, we're going to do this. Uh, this time he said, me. This, he's putting it on himself. He said, I want the pressure. I can control the pressure on myself. I can control what I do. Yeah. And then I think he kind of used a little, a little logic. He was like, if I play well, or if I play that well, we will win. And I'm going to play that well. well he guaranteed so victory. That, to me, that means they're going to win. Yeah. And that's kind of like one plus one equals two, Eric. Yeah. We all know that's true. Well, I think it's I think it's more of two plus two equals four. A if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Yeah. Yeah. Tran- transitive. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Transitive property. Thank you very much. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Um, but I, I like that attitude from Vaughn because I think you know. Some of it is like empty words at this point from guys being like, we got to be better. We got to be better. When Vaughn yeah. s- says like, hey, I'm going to do this, you know, I'm yeah. not just I'm going to do better. I'm going to have a couple sacks. I'm going to dominate this game. If I play Wait. that way, I'm going to make game changing plays. If you're if you're Malik Reed, if you're um, Pat Sertan, like especially some of these younger guys, if you're a young linebacker in there see, yeah. filling in and you hear Vaughn Miller say that. I think it fires you up. The other thing about it is we've seen Vaughn sort of, I don't want to say snap, but like sort of flip that switch where he just goes a little crazy. We've seen that. I mean, he did that against the Patriots uh, in the AFC Championship game. He certainly did that against the Panthers where just he plays like a man on fire, like a possessed man. Certainly did that in that Arizona game. And uh, because he's done that in the past, when he says he's going to do it again, you're sort of like, uh-oh. Well, he's going to do it. 
you know, huh. well, and especially this week, like the matchup works well because the Bronc or the Browns are down. They're starting two tackles. Yep. They're starting two or their best two running backs are not going to play. Odell Beckham did not practice Monday or Tuesday on their estimated report. Baker Mayfield's hurt. Like this has the makings of something that could just go wrong for Cleveland's offense, and Vaughn could yeah. just have a really big day and get the Broncos a win that they really need. Yeah, and I mean, I think to his point, when he gets a couple of sacks, that helps his defense play well. I think he's right on the money with that. Uh, the last three games, he's only had a half sack, and the Broncos' pass rush has really not been where it needs to be. I think uh, everybody can agree with that. Last week, Derek Carr, heading into that game, was on pace to be sacked 51 times, Eric. That would have been a career high for Carr. He was only sacked twice, and those two sacks – came from Kareem Jackson and Bryce Callahan. Well, and they were like one-yard sacks, zero-yard yeah. sacks. They were like right at the line of scrimmage. That's, but um, that it didn't come from a pass rush. Yeah. No, they, they haven't been – the the push up front has not been good enough, especially when they're just sending four rushers. It's got to be better. Um, in week two against the Jags, I mean, Vaughn is fighting off chips. Then he's going by a tackle to, to get the sack. He's got to – he'll probably face similar attention this week. He's still got the talent to do it, and maybe with you know the lack of weapons that the Browns have, because I don't think Jarvis Landry is back either. Yep. It's possible, whether it's Case Keenum, Baker Mayfield, they might have to hold the ball a little bit. Did you say Case Keenum? Case Keenum, old friend Ooh. Case Keenum. Yeah. Shmeenum. <laughs> Case Shmeenum. He's a smarter Shmeenum. <laughs> No, we like we like Case. Good book of that course. he wrote. Uh, Case Keenum, uh, quick story here, Taste of the Broncos. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is a never before told story. This is story. a taste of the Broncos. Okay. And uh, he's doing a little press here. And he goes, Eric is like, oh, uh, you know, hard hitting question, something like, uh, you know, what was your favorite food they tried here at, at the taste of the Broncos? Okay. Yeah. All these vendors, you know, line up outside of the stadium. It's a really nice night, raises money for uh, the Broncos community department. And uh, Eric's out there, you know, Broncos charities. To Broncos charities. Yeah. Sorry. Well, that's where the goes, money goes directly to Liz Gerald's. <laughs> no, uh, they that that goes into a fund from which they pull to help the community. Okay. Yeah. And Eric goes, uh, "What was your favorite thing you tasted?" You know, not like, "Hey, how are you going to get better?" Let me tell you about the field. Oh you know, you're just like, "What? <laughs> Let you me taste? tell you about the and field." And he goes, uh, uh, "Something about you know the game is what I thought. Maybe that's why Eric was there." But he's like, "What'd you taste?" And he goes, "Philly cheese, Philly cheesesteak wontons, man, killer." Did I say that right? <laughs> Philly cheesesteak wontons. Killer, man. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of lead up to easy. mess up the joke. Philly cheesesteak wontons. Killer, man. Killer, man. Yeah, great yeah. clip. Yeah, it was. we saved that clip. The Broncos were 2-0 uh, and o at that point, I believe. They just beaten the Raiders. Should I drop the clip in right there? <laughs> okay, okay. So. Here, I'm going to drop the clip right here. Okay. It was Philly cheesesteak uh, wontons. It was killer, man. Killer man. Yeah, killer man. But yeah, we could see old friend Case Keenum here on Thursday if Baker Mayfield yeah. cannot play. And that looked like a pretty. He said that he tore his labrum on his left shoulder. Mayfield. He's right arm. Ar yeah, he's right ar uh, handed, armed, right armed. I think I think that's also a thing. He's a, he's a right arm thrower. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he, he says he tore his left labrum week two, and then last week J.J. Watt is chasing him down and that looked painful it looked kind of awkward the way he came down and uh good for jj watt he like stood with him until uh you know all the help good guy jj watt yeah, walter really peaton man of the year yeah but it looked bad and then uh this week mayfield says uh i decide if i'm gonna play or not okay <laughs> so I, and uh that's just the way it is which is so funny because Teddy was, we'll get to this in a second, but Teddy was asked the same thing, and he's yeah. like, well, I'm just working hard rehabbing. Yeah. Vic Fangio was like, it's going to be a decision between me, the doctors, Teddy, and Baker's just like, I decide Baker's. if I play. Baker uh, Mayfield played for the Broncos side at the Senior Bowl. That's right. A few years back. He left at halftime in a helicopter. Correct. That is rock star status. Yeah. When you saw him, he had an entourage around him the entire time, that week down there in Mobile, and you were like, this dude, this guy cool. is a superstar. He's he cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, and he he's stayed like that. He, I mean, he's always had this edge to him. He's a flag planter. He's a dancer. If you if he's on your team, you love him. You know, and uh, good actor, I think. 
Yeah, some commercials. His commercials. Yeah. He's like living at the stadium there in Cleveland. Is that yeah, right? I yeah. think so. Yeah. Those are pretty good. I will say with Vaughn, if he can make a game changing play, it's not a sack to me is not a game changing play. He needs to get back to forced fumbles, yes. which coincidentally, Phil, the last forced fumble that Vaughn has was in that Arizona game. Kind of hard to believe that it's wow. been almost yeah. three years since Vaughn has a force. I mean, we're just used to him doing that. Yeah. And the Broncos are now minus two in the turnover margin. Well, that's what happens that's when good. you turn the ball over four times. Yeah. And you don't get any. Yeah. Yeah. That is what happens. I mean, they, yeah, they are, uh, have one takeaway over the last three games. Broncos have to be better. Yeah. I think they're going to have their chances. They're on paper, and you don't know how this plays out, but on paper, the Broncos defense is going to have a big advantage against Should. this Cleveland offense just in terms of the available talent. Well, the Broncos are missing their two starting linebackers. Yeah, but you I mean, I mean you that, still have you still have Vaughn Miller, you still have what is supposed to be one of the better secondaries in the league. Yeah. And you're going to be going against third and fourth string tackles, third string running back. Uh yeah. I think I think their center is not going to play. Odell Beckham might not play. Like we mentioned Baker, if you see him it's going to be a beat up version. So the Broncos have to this can't be another game where the Broncos give up mid twenties. Like they've got to be dominant in this game. They can yeah. they can go out and, and I think Phil win this game for the team if the defense plays well enough. But they got to go do it. There can't be any excuses yeah. defensively this uh, game. Certainly no deep shots, especially no. on the first drive of the game. <laughs> that you know, could be nice. I I might lose my mind if I see that area. Yeah. And we know what the happens. Sweater's going to be <laughs> yeah. Even this more red. Be so red. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the Pixar movie Inside Out? Uh, no. Well, then this isn't going to make any I sense, so we can move out. on. No, go ahead. Tell Good me. Pixar film. Inside Out, okay. Uh, it's about, oh, that's where they go inside the body? Yeah, but up, in the brain. I've seen Up. It, that's a great movie, too, yeah. <laughs> it's the, like, five five little people in your brain oh, got it. that are your emotions, essentially. Uh-huh. And there's there's an angry, grumpy one that's uh-huh. red. That kind of that's kind of you. There, and then there's that one one's that, in control. There's me, one that just there's one that just cries all the time and is blue. That's me. That's you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the big weirdo. Yeah, no major <laughs> weirdo. weirdo. Sorry, big dum dum. The big dum dum. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Can't give up a deep play, and you know one way to help prevent deep plays: pass rush. Because yeah. then the guys can't run as far. Because it takes a little bit of time, and if you sack the quarterback, you can't do it. Yeah, I mean, I would expect Cleveland, based on their offensive system, Kevin Stefanski, uh, a, a disciple of Gary Kubiak, who's a disciple of Mike Shanahan. They run all that similar system. It's a lot of bootlegs, play action, zone, zone, zone uh, blocking. So I'm not sure how much they're going to just drop back and throw it, chuck it deep normally. I'm a little concerned about the play action pass. Just because this running game is still going to be good. The top running attack in the NFL. Yes. Well, when with, they have their healthy guys. Correct. But the with two new linebackers, or I guess one new linebacker, but Justin Cernad, Micah Kaiser are essentially going to be your starting linebackers. That's where you would attack if you're Cleveland. You've got, they're going to run right at them, so the Broncos are going to have to pay attention to that. And then what you have to be careful of is you know a, a fake handoff, and now they're throwing a crossing round. It goes for – catch and run of 25 30 yards because the deep shots were not the only issue phil the broncos also had trouble and have had trouble with kind of these intermediate throws that have then become 30 or 35 yard gains well that's like the one uh, to Kenyon drake over alexander johnson i mean i, I would assume that we're going to see more of that type of stuff attacking the linebackers yep just well, that- as has played four and a half games of football in his life that play, the Chase Claypool that we talked about yeah, with Vaughn, yeah, 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 exactly. um, Sterling Shepard against Pat Sertan, like, yeah. that's the type of Missed stuff they're going to do. and it's going for a long. Yeah. Yep. You know, are these guys fundamentally sound? Are they in the right place? Technique. They're going to test them. Yep. Um, but I, I like I like what Vaughn did. I don't have a problem no, with that. I, I, think, I like it too. And I, I know that, you know, it might, it might fire up Cleveland a little bit. Those guys might say, hey, let's prove him wrong. But it should fire this team up too. Yep. And they got to do something to get out of this rut. So Yeah. And quite frankly, when Vaughn says he's going to do that, I'm, I'm not even sure even if a fired up Cleveland can really do much about it. Yeah. When Vaughn gets like that, when he goes, when he goes crazy. Yeah. Can't stop Excited it. to see it. 
Me too. Me too. Eric, let's talk about the other side of the ball here a little bit with Teddy Bridgewater limping around. the. We saw him after the game go up to the podium, and then he limped out of the room. And then we saw him on Tuesday go up to the podium here at the facility, had a hard time getting up there, and then joked at the end. He said, all right, turn the cameras off because I'm going to try and get off of here. So uh, I'm still in good spirits, which I think is a, is a positive sign. But, uh, Eric, how concerned are you about the health of Teddy Bridgewater? Well, I mean, of course it's a concern because I think the major reason is you look back at last year, he played very well, or pretty well, very pretty well to very well. The first eight or nine games of the season, he suffers an injury and then was not the same player the rest of the year. So I think the biggest concern for me is, is this something that's going to linger, or is it just a bruise? Because if there's if there's something serious going on and this impacts his play the rest of the year, that could be a death sentence for this team. They need Teddy to play the way he did early this season. Uh, so that's that's one kind of like overarching concern. But as far as this week goes, part of what makes Teddy good is he can escape the pocket. You know, he doesn't often scramble. It's rare, but he can shuffles. do it. He shuffles. Yeah, he shuffles. I think he should still be able to do that, but. I just wonder if some of these rollouts that he's, you know, I think back to the preseason, he rolls out to his left, finds Cortland Sutton in the end zone for a touchdown. It was a good ad-libbed play. Can he make that play this week? And yeah. especially with Miles Garrett coming his way, you got you got you can't get hit by that guy too many times. Miles Garrett, eight sacks this season, leads the NFL. Teddy Bridgewater was asked about Miles Garrett. He said, "Well, it depends on which version we're getting. Does he have his sleeves uh, all all the way ex- cut off?" Yeah, I would go no sleeves if I were Miles Garrett this week. Yeah, that that's scary. You got to match that's up terrifying. with Vaughn. That's terrible. But Vaughn wears sleeves because he's allergic to grass. That is true. Yeah, and he has asthma. Yeah, it's amazing if you think about how how did Vaughn make it to this point? It's he true. He plays. He earns a living on grass, and he's allergic to it. And he's allergic to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Miles Garrett, he's a, a terrifying specimen of a pass rusher. He's going to get his. You know, I think especially not to pick on Garrett Bowles, but Bowles uh, had a bit of an injury. He's working through that this week. Has not been quite the player we saw last year where he, uh, Bowles was a second-team All-Pro last year, right? I believe so. Yeah, so not not quite to that level. He hasn't been terrible, but it's not not what we saw last year. And uh, he's going to have a heck of he's going to have his hands full all night long on Thursday. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of this is pride for some of these guys. Garrett Bowles has to have the pride to play better. Cortland yeah. Sutton and Tim Patrick, I mean, not entirely their fault in those deep brawls, but you got to go make those plays. Teddy Bridgewater has to play better, and same thing on with all these guys on the defensive side of the football. But I think part of it is just. The word man up or the phrase man Ooh. up is like you just got to get going here. And I think it falls on a lot of these guys to just look at themselves in the mirror. We heard Von Miller say, farm your own land. Yeah. Look, look at yourself in the mirror. Say, here's what I can do better. Take it personally. Go out there and try to play your best game. And when that will happen, this team is talented enough that they can win the game. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, the, obviously losing Judy and Hamler and Alberto, those are significant playmakers, but there's still enough talent there that they should be scoring at least in the mid-20s in a normal type of game. You know, Obviously, last week they scored 24, but two of those touchdowns came in cleanup. It was really 10 points. Yeah. So they got to be able to move the ball, extend some of these drives, don't get in third and long situations. I like the fact that they came out and scored that opening drive touchdown last week. Let's maybe get get going earlier here. And then also, in my mind, I'd like to see more Javante Williams. I mean, every time that guy catch, gets a ball in his hand, he's a spark. He's creating. He's, he's making the extra hustle play, you know. And Melvin Gordon, too, has been pretty good this year, I think. So – uh, I would say, like, try to get the ball in those guys' hands a little bit more, too, whether it's screen, uh, pitch out, just a, a regular run. Just get the ball in their hands and let them create, too. Yeah, and I, you know, some of that is based on circumstance. Like, the Broncos, I thought, in the first half did a good job of that. And then on the final drive of the half, you go away from the run game a little bit because you're in two minute, which yep. is okay. But then the next time – or the next time you get the ball back, you're down 10, which is still okay, but – I think they went three and out, and you punt. Next time you get the ball back again, 17 points. And so at that point, like the defense has to play well enough, too, to keep you in that. The offense has to play well enough to give the defense a chance to 
to get a better pass rush and make the opposing team hold the ball. But yeah, these when one side of the ball has been playing well, the other side has not necessarily matched it. And so that's, yeah. that's hurt them. Eric, I've got to talk about this because Teddy Bridgewater was asked twice, maybe, maybe even a third time on Tuesday, are you for sure going to play? And he didn't answer the question directly. He said, I'm going to attack rehab every day, and I'm, I'm really focused on a game plan. Um, you could tell that he didn't want to answer that question. Yeah, and like we said, if he plays, he's going to be somewhat limited, we think. If he doesn't play, that means Drew Locke is up. And Pat Shermer said on uh, Tuesday that he's got confidence in Drew, thinks he can go in there and be ready. And maybe it'll be different, you know, having uh, – granted, it's a short week, but going into the day of the game knowing you're going to play, maybe it's different than what we saw uh, against the Ravens. But Drew has to be better. He's got to play better. Um, that sort of performance won't get it done. But my, my guess, Phil, is that Teddy's going to play. Yeah, he'll at least give it a go is what I would I would think. Because the injury, he says it got stepped on late in the game against the Raiders. You know, maybe that's like a pain situation. He says it went numb. Uh, I don't know. How does it go numb? That's a nerve thing, right? I don't know. Yeah, I I just wonder how. Because it's probably a big person who stepped on it. Cleats. Yeah. You know. Well, he made it sound like it was an offensive lineman who who accidentally accidentally stepped backwards. Yeah. So that's probably pretty painful. I think anybody who's hurt the top of their foot knows how painful that is. So maybe it's like a pain thing more so than a actual like uh, like a damaged ligament or something like that. Yeah, just hard to, hard to speculate without yeah. knowing exactly what it is. But yeah. he, we'll you see. know, Teddy came back from a concussion, played the next week, has started every game. If he can, if he can be out there. He's going to be out there. The, there's been some reports, though, that I've read this week that said, regardless of Teddy's health, should Drew even be getting a chance at this point? No, I mean, they're 3-3. They're three and three. Teddy has played good football. He's he, uh, We talked about this on Monday, Phil. He's not necessarily a guy that can win every single game when the rest of the team isn't playing well. But it, when you're playing complimentary football, he can do enough. Yep. Um, he earned the job in training camp. He generally doesn't turn the ball over against the Raiders. That was kind of an anomaly, I think. He's done everything you've asked of him, and except for the Raiders game, I don't think he's been the reason why you've lost. And when you're three and three and still in the playoff hunt, um, though I understand that the schedule gets more difficult, you're not going to just switch quarterbacks here. I mean, this is Teddy's team right now. I think one of the things we've heard all week long is what's the confidence of this team? I think we've heard maybe like 28, 29 questions about confidence. And I think that Teddy is a guy to keep confidence high. I mean, he has really become the leader of this team. He breaks down the team every game day. He's got that veteran presence. I think if you were to make a decision that wasn't injury-based to swap him out, then you're talking about a real confidence issue in the locker room, I think. Well, and I, you know, Drew is not a, a rookie. No. So, so there's – when he was a rookie and this team was not playing well, and granted at that time they, they were, were, they were, they were yeah. three and six, yeah, not three exactly. and three. Yeah. At that time, there was it made sense to say, hey, well, let's, let's see Drew. Let's these guys. Let's some, see what yeah, can happen. Drew played five games that year. He had a whole season last year. He had a chance to earn the job in training camp in the preseason. He came in against the Ravens. We've seen Drew Locke play a decent amount of football – and so, to me, there's not kind of that sense of, well, we need to see him play to see what, what he can be. Well, yeah. Nope. It's possible. And I think that if he played more, he would probably improve incrementally. But from what we've seen so far, I think you kind of know what you have with Drew. And so, there's, yeah. not, there's not like a, hey, the second we – or if you fall out of playoff contention, even then I'm not sure that they're going to go back in that direction. And but, and, but not the – let's see what he has to give this team a spark. I, I mean, don't think so either. Yeah. I don't think not at this point. Not no, at this point. No. And I think the bigger reason is Teddy hasn't been the reason why they've been losing these games. Right. And at, at, you know, Vic was asked about it this week and he said, "No, Teddy is the guy to lead this team and I'm confident in that." So, yeah. I would not expect anything uh like that coming up here. And if Drew does need to play on Thursday, it'll be because Teddy can't. Right. So, uh let's get to some predictions, Eric. You got uh, a bold I'm on bold, bold like this sweater I'm wearing predictions. 
Okay, I mean, is it bold enough to say I think Vaughn is going to come out and have that forced fumble and okay. that, that game-changing yeah, play? Yeah, what do you – I, I think – A forced fumble. Forced fumble, two and a half sacks. Ooh, that'll be good. That would be good. Um, let's see. What should I What should I say for the defensive side of the ball? Like, um, maybe like, how bold is this? They won't give up an opening drive touchdown. That's uh, less bold than saying, "Hey, I got my thing right last week." I said they were going to score an opening drive touchdown. Yeah, you did. I was right. That was good. This defense will not give up an opening drive touchdown this this week. And considering how things have gone the last two weeks, that's pretty bold. Yeah. Uh, one more for me. I think. Okay. I think no pass completions of more than 35 yards. Oh, okay, yeah. Is that bold? Well, I mean, I would consider that no, like a big play. No 75-yard touchdowns. Well, That's what I'm going to say. They haven't done that yet. <laughs> but the last few weeks, they've, I mean, they've done 50, they've done 49, 48. True. No, okay. no, no pass 35. completions of more than 35 yards. Okay. How about on the offensive side? Oh, yeah. That's another That's side usually of the ball. we go to the other side of the ball. Uh, Javante Williams, okay. two touchdowns. I like that. Yeah, see, that's what I want him to get in the, in the mix. Uh, they're a little bit beat up on defense too. Not not uh-huh. as bad, but Jeremiah, Jeremiah Owosu Koromoa, uh-huh. who we liked coming out of the draft. Yeah, Notre Dame. He was probably an option if you didn't trade up for Javante Williams. Yep, he was a guy that maybe was a potential second round pick. He's not playing. Um, no. They've got some other guys beat up on that side of the ball, and I think I think you need to. This is a, a short week. You're less beat up than them. Your offensive line, I think. You think pound in a little. Uh, yeah, I mean, make this a physical yeah. game. Make it physical. Let's get physical. That's <laughs> what it <is>. Yeah. <laughs> you know the Broncos have won six consecutive games in Cleveland? I did know that. Yeah. That dates back to 1991. Yeah. In Cleveland. And just a couple of years before that, there were some pretty big games yeah. in Cleveland. And I think they've won 12 of 13 versus the Browns just in general. Well, the Browns, Browns were in a bad spot for a while. Yeah. So just some some stats there for, for – um. uh, I mean, they've got a, they got an opportunity here, Phil. If you go and – you know, the, everyone is disappointed. You've lost three in a row. If you go and you st- – I don't want to say st- – I'll say steal. You steal a game in Cleveland that before the year we looked at as, hey, yeah, this is had- one of the toughest matchups on the schedule because we thought Cleveland was going to be really good. We didn't think they would be this beat up. It's a short yeah. week. You're on the road. I the whole year I've thought this is not a game that you can win. Yeah. The way that things have developed over the course of the last week in terms of injuries, yeah. in terms of where this team is, I think it's a winnable game. And if you get it, then all of a sudden, you know, you've given a couple away here the last week. Like you probably should have beat Pittsburgh. You probably should have beaten the Raiders at home. Those are two that you can't get back. If you beat the the Browns, you now take one from the column of well, we should, we weren't expecting to win that game, and so you kind of make up some ground a little bit, yeah. and feeling probably pretty decent with a ten day break before Washington. Yeah, I think if you get a win, the vibe around town will change a little bit, and just say, okay, we got we snap that skid there. Let's see if uh, especially because it just keep, it keeps right you way. like you play Washington, you play Philly before the ball. You're in there. You'll yeah. just be in the mix. You didn't the, mention Dallas. They you do have to go to, to Dallas. You don't want to I don't, that one. Yeah. To me, that might be the hardest remaining game on the schedule. Yeah, the way they're I mean, playing. They're playing well. Uh, Diggs? And they throw it deep. Oh, man. Diggs is interesting. I saw today he's and given up the every... most receptions of more than 20 yards. He's given them up, huh? Yeah. That's why teams still try to go after him. Yeah, he's given up plays, think, but then uh, he – what, he has seven interceptions? Yeah. Second on that list. That's crazy. Most 20-yard uh, completions, Kyle Fuller. Mm. Who only played two snaps – Last week. Yeah. I expect that to go up. I think he gets back so. in there. Well, we'll see. Keaton Stearns was put on the injury report on Tuesday with an illness. Yeah. Don't these days you don't like to see illness. No. But I, I will say no, that no. we have not heard about that. Ever. As long as uh as long as Keaton Stearns is able to play, I, I think it's gonna stay the same. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you get Fuller back out there a little bit. Yeah, for who? Uh, well, I think that you just got to mix it up. Maybe a b- couple of breather plays or something like that. Maybe it's not a permanent, hey, you're the starter. You're back in the starting lineup. I think that they brought him in here to play. So uh, I think you got to figure out a way to at least get him some reps. You know, he's got to have an opportunity to get back, back uh, out there. Because when he is good, he's pretty good. Yeah, so I mean, that's just how the league works. Chances. 
Okay, well, Darby did not play well last week. No, so but I think boom, he should be so swapped out then, or what? If that's what, is that what I you're saying? Know. Well, no, I'm just saying you're saying that's the way the league works. You get beat deep, you don't play anymore, right? Kyle Fuller got beat deep about four weeks in a row. Yeah, Darby's that is co- true. Darby's coming back Working off an injury. If it happens again with Darby, maybe I would just clone Pat Sertan and put him on the other <laughs> side. Yeah, that could be nice. Pat Sertan the third. That'd be good. Yeah, the third already, huh? Yeah. Wow. Sertan um, again, again. Sertan again, again, again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eric, my bold prediction on the offensive side of the ball. What if I said, uh, um, uh, let's say Tim Patrick will have a completion of 40 yards or more. Throw it? No, 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 a completion. Oh, yeah. I he, would. I view a completion as a pass. He'll have a, a reception. reception. A reception, I'm sorry. That's okay. A reception. That, a completion of 40 yards is bold. That would be a little. Well, they should do it. Cor- well, Corlin Sutton threw one uh, to, Tim. to Tim. And then in Arizona, I think Emmanuel, Emmanuel threw, threw it to Corlin. Corlin. Yeah. So now what are you saying? So Emmanuel now, has to uh, throw it to Tim. No, Tim has to throw it to, to Emmanuel. To Emmanuel. Yeah. That would be hard. He's on the wrong team. That could be. If that, that happens, pass. that would be bold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a bold prediction. Uh, Jerry Judy, plays or no? No, he will not play this week, I don't think. Yeah. I think uh, I'm, a week too soon. I would say about uh, 85, 90% sure that that will not happen. Yeah. But I do think, it, I think in all likelihood he'll be out there against Washington. Me too. That's Me my too. guess. Uh, you Just tend to get a, a guy out week. in practice a little bit. Uh, one week, don't play him, and then the next week. I think even if I think even if this was a full week, there's a chance he could have played yeah, this week. Possibly, we saw him running around on the field during media. Yep, he looked pretty good. Yeah, I think Some that rust. You, I I think that he even on a Sunday he went okay. Play, is what I think. But next week, yes. I think I think all systems are go for Washington, and he's he'll be a. We'll talk more about that next week, but he yep. is going to be a big boost. That'll be a nice, much needed boost. Yeah. I would say, uh, Eric, a score prediction. I, uh, I kind of like I said all year. I didn't think Cleveland or that the Broncos could go into Cleveland and win. Even recently, I didn't. We, we sat here two weeks ago and said they've got to beat Pittsburgh or the Raiders because they, they they're happen. not going to go to those Cleveland and win. Didn't happen, yeah. Those things did not happen. Yeah. But we said that they needed to because they weren't going to go to Cleveland and win. When the injuries started piling up, I started thinking. This is interesting. Yeah. And then on Tuesday, I stood there and Von Miller looked me in the eyes. And he just – you he can just tell you. when he's ready to go. Yeah. That convinced me that, you know, we don't know how much uh, how much more Vaughn has got left in the tank. But there, there's a country yeah. song, Phil. You ever heard of it? Is it about a dusty road? <laughs> there's a, a truck involved. Truck. A pickup truck. And, and a and dog. And a dog is co-pilot. And a beer. And a beer can. There's a there's a line in a country song, not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Wow! So you you can, Vaughn, you can do it one I, time. as good as ever. Yeah, I think but you Vaughn can't do that every week. Yeah, I think Vaughn is due for one of these big okay. games. Yeah, and when he's at his best, he's still a really really good player. Yeah. So uh, I think Vaughn gets it done, and the Broncos win seventeen sixteen. One point game, Eric. which I think is the score of the Broncos Browns game here in 2018, if I when remember they correctly. Lost. Yes, but didn't okay. switch. Got it. That was Saturday night football, though. Thursday night football on Saturday night. I think that's presented what it was by Sunday night football <laughs> on NBC. It is. It is yeah. confusing. When that, that was happens. a little confusing. Yeah, I say 21 Broncos. Okay. Cleveland 13. You've been predicting big wins the last few weeks. Not just Is that a big win? Eight points? Well, you predicted they were going to beat Baltimore by like 11? I was riding. I was drinking the Kool-Aid with the Ravens. You predicted they were going to beat the Steelers by, I think, 10? Yeah. You predicted I, they were going to beat the you, know, Ra- <laughs> you predicted they were going to beat the, Ra- the Raiders by double digits? And if you don't like that, you could get out of here. Or no, no, you I'm picked the Raiders kidding. by one. Or the Broncos one, by one. Yeah, one. yeah. Uh, Eric, I will say when you were just that's talking about the injuries mounting up and the Broncos should win, that seemed very similar to when we were talking last week. Like, hey, with all the coaching stuff going on with the Raiders, the Broncos should win. Yeah. All the injuries in Cleveland, the Broncos should win. Uh, I mean, they, they've, they're they going to have to prove it uh, this week. Of course, I believe they can do it. But I think some of the fans, they need to see it this week. And I think they'll do it. But I'm just saying some people, they're going to need to see it before they start buying in again. Here's here's the difference is that they lost their coach. 
and he was their play caller, to be fair. But you, you still had Derek Carr and Darren yes. Waller and Henry Ruggs, you know, Josh Jacobs on the defensive side. They're still talented. You yeah. still had Max Crosby. So the this Cleveland team doesn't have – Players make plays. Got it. Coaches coach, players make plays. That's true. And, the, you know, it's a, we've heard many people say this. I think Ed Donatel is a, a fan of this saying it's a player-driven league. It is. And so it really is. We talk, I think we maybe made too big of a deal about the coach thing because none of their players were gone. Yep. This week, certainly they're – do you think it's a stretch to say Nick Chubb is their best offensive player? No, he's probably – other than Derrick Henry, he's like w- yeah. 1B. They don't have him. They don't have Kareem Hunt. Yeah. doesn't seem like Odell Beckham's going to play. Baker's beaten up. Their top two tackles are gone. Their center is hurt. Yeah, I mean, Ke- Kevin Stefanski is a really good coach, but I just I think at a certain point it's like, gosh, how much can you take yeah. and still find success? They didn't. They haven't found it. Recently. So you say seventeen sixteen. Yeah, I say twenty one thirteen. Hard. <laughs> yeah, you still think it's gonna be hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, let's get to some emails. Perfect. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. that's why I got the phone out here. No, that's so okay. You, yeah, I get the phone out here. Uh, this one is from Kenneth Brown. Uh, Hi, guys. I received my stickers. It was cool getting the warm welcome penned by each of you. Thanks a million. Thank you. We pen. Yeah, we pen. Do write, we do write a nice little thing. Um, he, he wrote a longer email here, but he said, uh, you know, we're talking about coaches coaching, players playing. He goes, the tendency naturally is to assign more blame to one side over the other. Is it coaching or playing? He goes, uh, they, he thinks they're equally to blame. Who do you think is uh, more at fault? No, I mean, for I. The, for the skid. I agree with that. I mean, I think there's been times in games where the coaching hasn't been quite good enough. I think Vic Fangio has said that. Uh, Pat Shermer has said that. You know, whether it's a, a play call, clock management, um, whatever it might be, putting them in situations to succeed against certain. Uh, offenses or defenses, depending on what unit. So that's been the case. And then there's just been, you know, Ronald Darby was in perfect position to make that play against Henry Ruggs at the end of the game. That's that has nothing to do with the coaching staff. Yep. He's got to he's got to make that play. You're you're paid to make that play. And so that's not. Yep. I'm not trying to pick on Darby here, but I'm just using that as yep. an example. Like of another like, example, the fourth down play. Eric Salbert is open on that play. I yeah. Mean, you it, could say run it or not, but Salbert was open. And if Bridgewater just makes that play, the drive continues. And that's maybe a good example of one specific play where, to me, both sides could improve a little bit. Yeah. Because you could say, well, maybe maybe you should have just run the ball. Safer. Yeah, safer. Javante's tearing it up. Melvin's played well. I think Javante was in on that particular drive. But, you know, you look at it and you say, "Can can we push him around and get a couple yards? And then, like you said, a player standpoint, it's just not a very good throw from Teddy. Yeah. So, and that, that's a case where maybe uh, both sides can improve. Yeah, I, I agree there. Uh, let's get another email going here. Michael Valdez, just got your stickers. Thanks. This made my day after a tough loss. That's what Thanks, we're Michael. here for. That's what, yeah. I mean, that's what we're here for. Hopefully we can get a win in Cleveland. Uh, Bronco fan for life. Love that. That was pretty nice, I thought. Uh, let's see. I got another one here. Uh this one is from Brian Tejada. Okay. It says, I wanted to leave a comment question for the show. Uh, I know there's a lot of glaring issues, but one that sticks out to him is the offensive line, Eric. I uh, pretty much return the same offensive line as last year, except Bobby Massey, but it looks like the unit is regressing. Uh, your thoughts there. What do you think about that topic? Yeah, I mean, the, the offensive line has to be better. There's, I mean, Teddy held the ball for a little bit long in certain plays, but you're not giving up 17 hits and – your stat before thirty percent of dropbacks. You're not doing that unless that's a uh, Jeff Legwald's statistic. Unless uh, I appreciate you crediting. Yeah, that. Uh, just me, just clarifying. But I think that you've got to play better across the board because that's it's not good enough. So uh, there's been times where it's been one guy, you know, someone's been called for holding or a penalty or they miss an assignment. There's been times one of the sacks on Sunday, three or four guys miss blocks and Teddy just faced kind of like an onslaught of people in his face immediately I think in addition to the offensive line the tight ends need to chip in a little bit more I mean Noah Fant was whistled for holding twice yeah he whiffed on one block that led to a tackle for loss so he's got to improve in that area I mean it's a the running game you'd think should continue to be a strength but it, it seems like there are too many times when 
Javante, Javante in particular, is getting hit in the backfield. And so, yeah. yeah, they definitely need to play better. But I will say Vic Fangio mentioned earlier this week, he's not going to call out individual players. Because yeah. he was asked, do Dalton Reiser and Graham Glasgow need to play better? Because they've had some tough games. Mm-hmm. And he said, everybody needs to play better. It's not just yeah. them. And yeah. so Teddy can play better. The tight ends can play better. The offensive line can do better. The wide receivers can find separation more quickly. Yeah. Um, again, that's something that'll help. That'll be helped when Jerry Judy returns because mm-hmm. – He's just open all the time. Guy. Yeah. And Teddy did admit, hey, um, maybe on a, some, of, some of those plays, I just held the ball too yeah. long. Trying to exhaust the progression, I think, was the phrase he used. Yeah. So, uh, let's get to one voicemail here, okay. and that's from our fr- good friend, Tom Agnetti. Tom. He missed the Monday show, Eric. That's okay. We'll forgive him. That is the Monday show where we're live. At Breckenridge Brewery's farm. It's almost a home now. Yeah, we're getting close. But it's technically a farmhouse. Your whole family was there, yeah, so that's, that's what... True. Makes it close Supervisor, to Supervisor uh, Ben Swanson. Yeah. He His was wife there. was there. So it was. It that was little guy's f- married? Uh, I know. Yeah. They grow up so fast. They do. Well, she heard that he was, oh, he's almost got this supervisor <laughs> position locked down. So yeah. she she wanted to lock that up. Married for money. <laughs> yes, with Ben Swanson. Yep. Yep. That's it. I mean, the podcast supervisor is a lucrative yes. position. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it was a nice little atmosphere. Yeah, there. it was nice. It was really nice. The darkness, some strobe lights. We had strobe lights going. We'll get that corrected. Maybe. Audio first and then uh, strobe lights corrected. But anyway, that's every Monday from 6 to 7. Yes. Uh, and if you're not there, you can watch on our YouTube page live. Yeah, and worth pointing out that next week, it'll still be Monday, even though this is a Thursday game. Correct. We will not be there Friday night. I might be there Friday night. Yeah. But you know what people do on the show, right? Just me doing the podcast alone. (laughs) Eric, uh, here's Tom Agnetti's voicemail. Good morning, gentlemen. This is your friend Tom Agnetti. I hope you are well. I'm kicking myself because I forgot you guys were live last night from the brewery until the end. So I called the very end. And I wanted to have a more positive message this week. Uh, seeing a lot of posts and a lot of negative stuff being thrown, especially Eric's way on Twitter, I've seen. But um, when I looked at the overall situation and where we are, I feel like if you had told me in the preseason that we'd be 3-3, three and three, we being that I'm a maniacal Broncos fan, hopefully I can use that term, or the Broncos would be 3-3, three and three, I'd actually have been pretty happy with that to know that you had a chance at making the playoffs. And in fact, all the reports today show that they actually would be in the playoffs right now under the new structure. So the season is not lost. Everyone's acting like the season is lost. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, Eric, I don't think the Broncos would technically be in the playoffs right now, though. They would not technically be in the playoffs. They're the number eight, eight. seed in the AFC Some right tiebreakers, now. tiebreakers, complications in there. Yeah, but I think that Tom's right. The uh, – well, first he's right about the negativity that I'm receiving. Yeah, I mean, just, you get a just lot brutal. of hate. A lot of hate. I, I love the it. way he, uh, Tom says Eric. Eric. It's the, uh, it's it's the New Eric. Jersey. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, New Jersey. Yeah. Eric. Eric. Yeah. Uh, he's got a good pacing, too. I like the way, yeah. I like the way he does. Soothing. Talks. Yeah. Like if you told me Tom like Magnetti was in The Sopranos. You would believe it. I'd be like, yeah. Just because of the accent, Eric? Yeah, I mean, well, well he's he's got like the bald head. He likes to say, "I'm forget about it." Yeah, exactly, forget about the it. The paper on, boy. Forget about it, the paper boy. Um, but I, I think, and you've talked about this, the way that three and three has happened, I think, has hurt the confidence level. Three in a row, in particular. Well, and it hasn't been particularly competitive. Yep. But I think, say you lost Week One of the Giants in like heartbreaking fashion. But and you, you beat the Ravens later? But, you you know, you beat the Ravens or you went on the well, road you, you and feel, beat Pittsburgh. Yeah. Or, you you know, maybe you maybe you lost to the Ravens in Pittsburgh, but then you beat the Raiders this week to, like, get back to 3-3, three and three, and people yep. are saying, oh, we can get to 4-3 and three with a win over a beat-up Cleveland. Yeah. Let's go. Like, the, the tone would be different. Yeah. And so, to me, you can't – I mean, it doesn't matter how you got there. It matters what your record is at the moment – and Tom's right. The, the season is not lost. If you win this weekend, certainly you're right in the mix. No, yeah. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you lose this week, you're in a tough spot because yeah. you're under 500. And people have been saying like 10 wins, 10 wins, 10 wins. I've gone through, Phil, because I have a lot of 
<laughs> a lot of time to do this. Schedule. This is what your job is. If you can get to nine wins, there's a chance, depending on how things play out and who you beat and who you lose to, that that could be enough. I think there's going to be a wow. jumble of teams at nine, you know, whether it's the Steelers, the Bengals, mm. the Raiders, the Colts. But, yeah. but uh, there's a chance. And so that, to me, is not – nine wins, if you win this weekend, is certainly not lost – by any means, yeah. 10 is going to be tricky. You're going to have to steal another one somewhere. But Kansas City doesn't look nearly as good as they have in the past. You'd like to think you can rebound and play better against the Raiders. I mean, there's just a, there's just a lot of football ahead. A lot and, of football left to play. And I said this on Monday. I think it's good for a young team, which this offense is still pretty young, to be in important games late in the year. You know, how, yeah, you how, do you, to, how do you perform when you need a win? Yeah. You know? When there's nothing on the line, it's easy to just go out there and just play and you sort yeah, of don't have this. There's no pressure. Yeah. Like if you're fighting to be at, you know, around 500 or, or stay above 500 and you, you know, you really need to go to Kansas City and get a win or you yeah. need to come home and you need to beat a good Bengals team. Like those are, yeah. those are big games that I think are valuable whether or not you make the playoffs yeah. ultimately or not. Yeah, I I think that uh, expectations change over the course of a season. So while maybe you would be happy at three and three if you would have said this back in June, but after winning three in a row to start the season, I think a lot of people were saying this is this team's pretty good. Look, they got finally got some really good quarterback play. Your expectations change, and then you sort of lose that perspective of where they were um, a couple of months ago. So yeah. I do think that that. Uh, um, when teams go through hard uh, parts of their season, that's oftentimes when you heard that season or, or that phrase. Well, if you would have told me, you know, teams that are like six and zero, they don't go. Well, if you would have told me, they'd be six and zero at the beginning. You know, you don't really use that. You uh, you yeah, say I would. You, I mean, you probably it. would take that too. I would take it though. That is true. I just that think that. Um, there's a lot of football left to be played. A lot of, so, lot of football left. And, you know, the other thing is if you want to continue with the – if you had told me before the season, there's a couple of teams that aren't quite as good as I thought that they would have been. The Dolphins I thought would have been definitely in the playoff mix. It doesn't appear like they're going to be. Uh, the Colts have struggled a little bit uh, here to start yeah. the season. I thought they would have been right in the mix. On the flip side, I do think the Raiders are better than I thought they were. I mean, they, they have to play better, so, the Broncos. Yeah. No doubt about that. I mean, you're not going to go win. The Bengals, too. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to go win in Dallas playing this way. But I think yeah. I'm really excited to see what happens when Jerry Judy gets back because yeah. I think you'll see closer to what the potential of this offense is. Yeah. And then, you know, this team at the beginning of the year was talented enough that you were saying, hey, maybe they can steal one from Kansas City or split with the Chargers. Yeah. And so – if they can figure something out and get back to that, if the secondary – we talked about this at the beginning. If the secondary and on the uh, ready for kickoff show. Yeah, that's check our that preview out. show. Check that out. Yeah. The, the secondary – or the defense has played pretty well with the exception of the Raiders game. Like against Pittsburgh and Baltimore, it was really just the big plays that hurt you. So if yeah, you cut out a couple of that. plays, yeah. you know, you're back to that defense that you, you think you can be. They're going to have to stop the run this week. They will. And – I think maybe the last thing on that whole thing is before the season when we were predicting records, I think I said nine and eight. You might have said ten and seven. I said ten and seven. But like we always expected this to be hard. Oh yeah, exactly. No one, no one yeah. expected that the Broncos were going to go fourteen and three and just cruise to the playoffs. Yeah. And so I think when you had the three and zero start, people maybe forgot that this is a long season. It's yeah. tough. You are going to face adversity, um, and maybe just. You know, look at it as, hey, if the Broncos hadn't have won those first three and then you lost these three, well, now now you're not in the conversation. The Broncos yeah. went out and did take care of business against bad teams. Yeah. They've got to play better in the rest yeah. of the games. But especially, Phil – sorry, I know I said last thing, but the Broncos started 0-4 in 2019. They started 0-3 in 2020. Yeah, they got after a hot start this year. That was good. But, well, but the, the playoff race has been over before yeah. – before the end of September, yeah. each of the last two years, now you're right in the mix where games still matter, and you're phoning it in. Our, I mean, they gotta win this in, week though to stay. In yeah, that. but just and enjoy the like yeah. being in the mix for yeah. After the last few years, you haven't had the chance to do that. Yeah, yeah. You win this week, and you're still in the mix in November. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think that that's uh, 
that's a positive thing. Yes. You're, you're heading in the right direction. So thank you very much, Tom. Great, uh, great voicemail there. 707 neutral is how you leave a voicemail. That's how you can become a part of the show in the future. If you want to be like Tom Agnetti, super fan, you might not be able to be exactly like Tom. You can do but your best. you can try your yeah. best. 707 neutral or you can leave an email neutral zone show at gmail.com yeah or leave a comment right here on youtube if you're watching uh, on the broncos youtube page smash the subscribe button while you're also doing it or also hit us up on twitter definitely at eric delala with an a at phil milani with a ph non-traditional spellings eric before we go some quick shout outs liz gerald's yes and then a shout out of course to your wife your child your dog Ben Swanson's wife for all joining us at Breckenridge Brewery's farmhouse in Littleton. It was very nice. Very yeah. nice. Ben's wife um, made a quilt for my kid. Oh, it was really sweet. That's nice. It was very sweet. Yeah, it was a, a very thoughtful gift. It was very, very thoughtful. Nice. Yeah, and uh, we very much appreciated that. Yeah. So that was very nice. Uh, how about maybe something for like uh, the operations team here trying to get a quick turnaround out to uh, uh, Cleveland. Cleveland on a Thursday night. That sort of puts the pressure on everybody inside the building to cram a normal work week into essentially two and a half days. Not just us that are straining here. No. Well, this is how we always work. Yeah. You know, a we lot of work. We just really work. Fast. Yeah, a lot, really fast. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. But We're for used the to operations it. team here, uh, a quick shout out to them. I think. Yeah. I think that's fair. So we'll be back live next Monday after uh, the the weekend there. Yep. So we're not going to be on Friday, but the next Monday we'll be back out at Breckenridge Brewery's Farmhouse, looking to make it a farm home in Littleton off Santa Fe and Brewery Lane uh, from 6 to 7. That's next Monday, also live on the Broncos YouTube page. But until then, for Eric Dalala, I'm Phil Milani. You've been listening to The, the Neutral, Neutral Zone. Zone.